Welcome to our posts. Today we will see stories of our slash malicious compliance. Manager told me to call the person of the computer I was working on, so I did. I was sitting in my office one slow day and the CEO walked in, always a pucker moment even though I'm on very good terms with him, and he handed me an, obviously non-business, laptop and asked if I could get it back up and running as it had very important thing on it that was needed shortly and as I wasn't doing anything and he still signed my paycheck, I said you got it sir. Later a middle manager comes in and asks me to do something and I say you're number two in line and pointed to the, obviously not corporate, laptop I was fixing. Manager didn't like that much and demanded I call whoever and tell them that it wasn't acceptable for me to be working on personal equipment. So I pulled out my cell and called. Manager could only hear my half of the convo but what he heard was something like. Hey Tom, I got Bob here telling me it isn't acceptable for me to be working on your personal stuff and he wanted me to call you and tell you. Oh sure, he's right here, hang on. And I handed the phone to the manager. Manager started off saying, it's not acceptable. And then his eyes got real big and the rest of the conversation was yes sir and no sir. He hung up and thundered why didn't you tell me it was CEO's laptop? And I said you didn't give me a chance and demanded I call them right now. Next story. You want me to get the attention of your husband's CEO? It's your funeral. So over the past few days, I'd become friends with a retired army officer that I'll call Bell. She's been delighting me with stories of her service and she shared this wonderful story that I think you all will enjoy. Names and some details have been changed to protect the innocent. Belle was a young second LT at her first posting. As she put it, my college diploma hadn't even arrived in the mail and I was scared as hell. Fortunately, she got on the NCO's good side and settled in pretty nicely. One afternoon, she was at work when in storms an officer's wife, looking like she was in the mood to cause hell. Belle keeps her head down, trying to stay busy when she hears the dreaded words. I'm talking to you, soldier. Belle looked up and saw the woman, let's call her Karen because why not, standing in front of her. Can I help you, ma'am? Belle asked. Yeah. I'm Major's wife and I need to speak to Colonel Stone. Do you have an appointment? He's busy. Belle asked. Just go get him. I'll stand right here until you do. Belle looks around, wondering what the hell she's supposed to do. She didn't want to risk her job because Colonel Stone was known around the base for having a fierce temper. I'll have you knocked back down to private if you don't do as I say. Karen shouts. Now move. Wanting to get away, Belle got up and walked towards the colonel's office, intending to get away for a long enough coffee break that Karen will forget. When she looked back, she sees Karen is watching her like a hawk, so there goes that plan. Colonel Stone's door is closed and Bell knocks on the door. Yes? Colonel Stone barked. Sir. It's second LT Bell Smith. She said. Come in. Bell opens the door, does the customary salute and he immediately notices how nervous she is. What is it? Major wife is here and she wants to speak to you. Bell said, her voice squeaking. Does she have an appointment? She just said to go get you and she wouldn't leave until you saw her. I see. Did she threaten to knock you down to private? She did. Colonel Stone nodded and then said in a voice that scared Belle. Send her in. Belle salutes and then goes back to Karen. Karen looks absolutely smug. He'll see you now. Belle said. See? Now that wasn't so hard, was it? Karen said, strolling over to the colonel's office. It's at this point that a first sergeant named Sanders comes in. He just sits down and as the office door closes, he counts down in a low voice 3, 2, 1. What the hell were you thinking? Colonel Stone shouted. For a good five minutes, he proceeded to tear Karen a new butthole, telling her that she isn't permitted to wear her husband's rank and that if she tries pulling anything like that ever again, her husband will be busted down to private faster than he could sneeze. Karen left the office like a bat out of hell, white as a sheet and quaking. Belle never saw her again but she and the major got divorced shortly afterwards. According to Belle, he realized what a liability she'd be to his career. Next story. Take notes of everything you say in the meeting? Okay, but it will get you fired. So this happened a few years ago, and I will be vague since I'm still not sure if the dust has fully settled from this fiasco yet. 
At my former company, I was the secretary for a small improvement team that would meet monthly to discuss issues within the company and brainstorm ways to fix them. Something you need to know about me is that I was given this role because people know I am meticulous at keeping records due to HR-related issues I had at a previous place of employment. I don't think my boss realized that this careful record-keeping applied to her as well, especially when she appointed me to be secretary of this little committee, but I digress. I was a model employee, read, award-winning, and went above and beyond what was asked, as were many others in my department, but we were still having customer complaints and dealt with regular safety issues, due to the company at large and through no fault of our own. When we brought these concerns to our boss's attention, emails were left unread, and during in-person exchanges, we were called, whiny, needy, and were told that we needed to just deal with it. Whatever the issue, from items being stolen by customers to people being unhappy with the procedures the boss had set down for us to follow, it was always made to somehow be our fault. When we sought support from other departments, we were met with cold indifference, since the boss was great to them, and we must be exaggerating the things she said to us. Well, during an improvement meeting at the end of the fiscal year, it all came to a head. Myself and a couple of my team members dug our heels in and were insistent about the unresolved issues the boss refused to acknowledge, and she finally went off on us. She told us everyone was incompetent, didn't deserve our jobs, and that maybe customers would like us more if we were more likable. When people pressed her on safety issues, she continued to reiterate that we would just have to deal with it, and that if someone was going to die, they already would have, right? I, as the secretary, did my duty and took notes of all that happened over the course of that meeting. I usually did bullet points, but that night, I was feeling a little more thorough, so I wrote down words. Every word that was said. Every hateful comment, denial of accountability, and idle threat was recorded in black and white. Now, a second part of my job was to distribute the notes from the improvement meeting to the rest of the company. So, come the next morning, I ran about 100 copies of the transcript of the meeting and hand-delivered them to every single department in the building, and things blew up. People from other departments who had attended the meeting were able to verify that everything I had typed up had really been said, and folks were mad, threatening to quit, refusing to do their normal duties, browsing indeed during work, etc. My boss's boss, who worked at HQ, so I didn't get the opportunity to hand her a copy, got wind of these meeting minutes only a few hours after I had handed them out and had an hour-long, off-the-record conversation with me about all the safety issues I had documented, all the concerns I had submitted to management in writing, and all the records I had regarding my boss's inaction. She was very grateful for the 100 pages of documentation I sent over and thanked me for my time. The day after I unleashed Pandora's box, I put in my two weeks notice, took a new job, and pieced out to greener pastures. At first, it seemed like things were calming down after I left, but the following year, the company did not renew my boss's contract. I still feel a bit bad because I wasn't trying to get her fired or ruin her life, I was just desperate for some accountability thrown her way to create some positive change in the company. But at the end of the day, I just did what she had asked me to do. Next story. You don't want me to work after I put in my two weeks okay. So when I was in my early 20s I worked at a well-no sandwich franchise. I actually really liked my job and I would open and close, I'd also come in whenever anyone called out because I lived five minutes away. One day my boss hires a new person no big deal, except my boss kept cutting my hours more and more and giving them to the new person I went from working 30 plus hours a week to working less than 15. Oh and I was training them. So after a few months of my hours getting cut but me still coming in whenever call I put in my two weeks. My boss proceeded to not schedule me a single hour after that. Q malicious compliance one of my co-workers who would call and regularly didn't come in to open the store at 6 a.m. I drove by at 11 and it was still dark. My old boss had called me to ask if I could open for her. Nope you didn't want to give me any hours after I put in my two weeks figure it out. Well I drove by that store for a couple weeks and wouldn't you know it was only open half the time. Next story. Sorry, you told me to leave you alone. When I was around 15 or 16, a friend and I went to the local mall on the weekend to hang out and hit the arcade. After a bit we decided to get a drink at the food court. While we were standing in line an older man, late 30s or early 40s, looking like he just got out of the gym decided to cut in the line in front of us. The line was fairly long at this point, around 10 deep, they had the best lemonade in the mall. I tapped him on the shoulder and said, sir, we're in line here. He shot us a look and turned back around, 
pretty much ignoring the fact that we were there. When he got nearer to the register he reached into his pocket to take out his wallet. As he did so a wad of cash fell onto the floor unnoticed by him. As rude as he was, I was raised to be courteous and respectful. I picked up the cash and said, excuse me, sir. At which point he replied, without even turning to look at me, shut up and leave me the f alone. I turned back to look at the older gentleman behind us who just smiled and shrugged. So I placed the cash in my pocket. When it was time for him to pay, he opened his wallet to discover that there was no cash in it. He quickly turned and scanned the floor. When he didn't find the money he asked us if we'd seen him drop it. My friend said, can't help you. We were told to shut up and leave you the f alone. He was a bit spicy, he ranted, but in the end he walked away without his money. Turned out there was 147 bucks in there, a nice haul for a broke kid in the early 90s. Another time when I was just a little older I had gone to Wally World. I purchased something fairly inexpensive and paid the cashier. She handed me back around 87 bucks in change. I said ma'am, I think you gave me the wrong change. She looked at it and told me that she had it right. I responded, but ma'am. She cut me off, spitting mad, and went into a rant about how she was very good at math. I let her finish and simply said okay, sorry to bother you ma'am. I then took my leave. I wonder how she felt about her math skills when she counted her drawer after her shift. What I was trying to tell her was that I had paid with a 20, not a Benjamin. I hope you guys like this video if you did make sure like, comment, share and subscribe the channel or posts.